and they just they lose. That was that was a super fast game. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on guys and welcome to another gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well. I am pre-recording this and therefore don't know when this is actually going to go up. Uh, so this may be a weekend video. This might just be Tuesday's video. I've got no idea, but regardless, we're checking out Gruel Aggro today. Uh, I thought, um, you know, normally we play a lot of more, I will say a lot more janky decks for lack of a better way of saying it, uh, where we do some silly combos, maybe some reanimator stuff, stuff like that. But I thought, you know what, today, let's actually play a deck that is like pretty high tier at the moment, at least. Uh, it's not necessarily the best deck. Uh, if you look at the, the historic kind of uh, meta breakdown right now, uh, in terms of aggro decks, Elves tends to be a bit better as well as uh, life gain decks tend to be a bit better um, and certainly more consistent, but this is a really sweet deck and so I wanted to give this one a shot and just see how it goes. So I didn't create this list, I did pull it from Aether Hub, but there's some really interesting things in here and some techie bits uh, that we'll kind of talk about as we go through. In the one drop slot we do have Llanowar Elf to help ramp us into that three drop slot as quickly as we can, and then Pelt Collector, which is obviously going to get stronger and stronger throughout the game, kind of a must answer uh, on the opponent's end. In the two drop slot we've got Burning Tree Emissary, which is allowing us to essentially double our mana uh, to allow us to, not double our mana, but basically channel that mana into more stuff. Uh, and so on turn two if we can Burning Tree Emissary and then brawler or uh you know play the satyr here whatever it might be uh we can essentially just get more stuff down quicker with it uh and especially in tandem with lanowar elves we can do a lot uh scavenging uses here um provides us a little graveyard hate which is nice it also gives us some life gain so there's a lot of upside to scavenging ooze and then shatter skull smashing is in here of course is either removal or land it can be either one uh and is obviously a really nice utility to have in the three drop slot we got bone crusher giant uh rampaging ferocidon to stop a lot of those life gain decks this is a massive massive uh game ender in those circumstances unless of course they have something like banishing light uh kazandu mammoth either a land or obviously a big beater and then gruel spellbreaker which can really punch through some damage and is generally difficult to deal with as well. Clothis is here as a bit of a tech card. Uh, it does allow us to basically exile a card from graveyard, uh, from any graveyard, and then either add that as mana or gain two life and deal two life, which is kind of nice. Uh, in the four drop slot, we've only got two collected company. I find that a bit odd, but it's okay. We also have two questing beasts, and this card is obviously ridiculously good in most matchups. It's just very powerful. Goldspan Dragon sitting here at five. Uh, again, only a two of a lot of two ofs in this version. Um, and then, of course, Ember Cleave sitting at the top with three. We do have Ramanap Ruins here as a way to deal a little extra damage. But overall, that's about it. It's a really straightforward list with a few techie pieces. Uh, it does have a sideboard, but obviously we're playing best of one. We don't have to worry about that. So let's see how this one goes. We're going to jump into three games and hopefully, hopefully we can get some wins with this one. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And honestly, this is about as good a start as we could hope for. We have the, the Pelt Collector turn one. We can Burning Tree Emissary turn two, uh, play that out, and then maybe use the stomp side of Bone Crusher Giant to hit something along the way. So this is about perfect. Uh, I, I don't think I would change anything about this hand other than the fact that maybe a different uh, card other than Collected Company. Coco is very good, don't get me wrong, but uh, obviously in the early turns of the game, we're not going to get to play it. So it is what it is, but regardless, this should be a very interesting game. Let's go ahead and play out that Pell Collector and see what our opponent has. Hmm. Excuse me, I had a little burp there. Um, all right, looks like Adventures, uh, which is certainly an interesting one uh let's throw this out uh and you know what i think we're gonna go kind of aggro-y here um we are gonna waste one of that mana and that does unfortunately happen from time to time but i think just spreading the board out here a little bit is gonna give us a really good chance of at least punching through some damage uh love struck beast is certainly the worry uh as this is obviously a very very good card uh against us but that's okay we should be able at least uh to to punch through some damage so 
The question becomes, if we if we just throw out the, the Bone Crusher Giant, we can actually power up our cards enough that it's going to be difficult for them to really do a lot. So I think I'm actually in the camp of just doing that. Next turn, we obviously have Coco as well, which can do wonders uh, against a, a deck like this. So we're just going to try and be as aggressive as possible. In this instance, we just don't want to give them the time that they could normally get to uh, to get all of you know these really powerful love struck beasts things like that down um curious to see how they block here actually okay interesting i mean they do have a black or a red up here so okay wow very good very good by the opponent um Certainly a really well maneuvered play there a great way to kind of get some some uh, stuff off the board here But truthfully, I don't know how good or bad that might be if they have another love struck beast in hand It's certainly not bad, but they now don't have a great option this turn uh, and we also just have ember cleave up So something we should definitely do is just attack in here. Oh crap. Well, that's okay. Uh <laughs> Well, collected company. Uh, I, I expected them to block, actually, so that was just kind of surprising. Um, but that's okay. This is kind of perfect because now we just collected company uh, and hopefully get some really good stuff. Brawler is not bad as well as Pelt Collector. Um, this is going to obviously power this one up a little bit. That's good. And now we just attack in. Uh, yeah. We just attack in. Um, sure, I'll take that action. We'll see what they want to do in terms of blocks. Uh, that's fine. We're gonna Ember Cleave. And we're gonna just throw that on here. It doesn't really matter, because we're dealing enough damage to kill them here. And there we go! Easy win! Uh, wow, good start from Gruul Aggro. So, let's go ahead, like I said, three games, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into game two and see how we do. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. We actually uh, started another one and the opponent gave up before we even got to accept our hand. So uh, we're going to go with this one. And this is a slow-ish hand, but I think it's worth keeping. Uh, we've got a very strong turn two, obviously, so I'm not terribly worried about um, what the opponent might have. Black, red, that's a little scary. They could certainly... Ah, uh, shrines. Oh, good. Oh, how fun. All right, well... Here it goes. Uh, all right, so we're going to Burning Tree Emissary first. It's going to give us Brawler mana, which we're going to get in for. Um, and we're just going to go for it. I I hate this Shrines deck sometimes. It's a very frustrating one. What? Oh, interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, okay, uh, this is curious. Very curious. Uh, let's, let's do Pelt Collector. Let's go ahead and kill this. That's going to keep them from drawing some cards here. And then we're going to get an attack in before they can deal. I, I don't want them drawing extra cards. Given that this is a shrine deck, they obviously have some stuff they're looking to get to. Uh, so any amount of like we kill this is worthwhile for sure. Um, interesting. So we've got some options here. We could em we could Ember Cleave, which I think is probably the best play. Um, Let's see what they do. We're going to attack in. I'm going to take that action for sure. They may not block here, uh, which is fine. Uh, if that's the case, we might just Bone Crusher Giant this Crusader. They didn't play a land last turn, did they? Okay, perfect. So this is even better. This is exactly what we wanted because this gives it first strike, which means we kill that and then we get damage in. Absolutely perfect. This is about as as good a start as we could hope for. Let's just hope they don't uh, like sweep at some point. Ooh, nice. Um, all right. Well, they didn't sweep, so that's good. Uh, and they just they lose. That was that was a super fast game. That's what this deck does. All right. So uh, very very nice. Let's go ahead and move on to game three. All right, guys. Here we are for game number three. Uh, I honestly don't love this hand very much. Um, if this is a life gain deck, I'm gonna hate myself for doing this. But we're actually gonna mulligan, and this is actually a lot better. Uh, we're gonna put a mammoth back here. This is gonna allow us to do a lot more early on, uh, whereas previously we just couldn't, unfortunately. So, 
All right. Uh, looks like potentially elves. Uh, that's interesting. Um, let's get you down, and let's just get the mammoth down. Uh, this is a very strong turn to play because it's obviously an above average creature that's going to get even more above average next turn. Uh, and so very, very strong for sure. Curious to see what they actually have here. This could be elves. This also could just be mono green stompy. I mean, it could be a lot of different stuff. Um, okay, nope, definitely elves. Definitely, definitely elves. Uh, all right. With that being the case... Um, I think the play is to drop this for sure. We're gonna drop this. Uh, I'm gonna auto pay with these. And then we're gonna attack him with both of these. If they trade here, that is all the better for us, but it looks like they're not willing to. They could have so much coming down this turn. Uh, we have no idea how good this could be. So we'll see, uh, but we're gonna try and get as much damage in as we can. So now they have three four mana still uh any any one mana creature essentially costs zero for them thanks to the arch druid i mean that's pretty ridiculous um again essentially costing zero mana they now have one two three four five uh that's very good honestly a land off the top isn't the end of the world um although a collected company might be best Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Beast Whisper is very good, so that kind of makes sense. Um, ooh. Oh, that's very helpful. Um, all right, we're taking the opportunity before they can do anything to kill this. Um, that not only drops their creatures, obviously, but just it, it gets the man off the field, man. And, like, we have to do that, uh, honestly. And I think we just attack with the Mammoth. Um, and if they want to double block, they can, but it looks like they don't, which is fine. Um, so now they have four mana available. They don't have, like, the crazy amount that they would normally have with the Arch Druid. And they got another Beast Whisper. I mean, that's good, but it's not, it's not helping them end the game quite yet, which is certainly a positive. The Mammoth is going to get bigger here. That's very good. We're going to riot with the 1-1 one, one counter, I believe. Yeah. We're going to attack with these two, uh, happily taking this action just so they do have to double block it if they want to kill it. Uh, and the Mammoth is obviously getting through for some amount of damage. This does have Trample, so... Or does it? No, excuse me. Does not have Trample. For some reason, I thought that did get Trample when you uh, plussed it, but that was just a mistake on my end, no problem. Getting some stuff off the board. They are, I mean, we have to be very careful because eventually they can just activate this, uh, which is a lot of of power. So we got to be very careful here. We kind of need to win the game like this turn. I don't know how we're going to be able to do that. Um, let's see what they can do. Ooh, Reese. Very cool. Um, is this, I mean... Elves is a very good deck, obviously, uh, and so it's really cool to see it in action, doing what it's meant to do. I like that. Um, all right, so we can activate this. So we, I think we just need to try and like somehow, we just can't. These Beast Whispers are just too good. Um, I think we just attack here. Uh, I guess we could have also attacked with the Brawler. That would have made sense, uh, but that's okay. They are going to double block, that's fine, they'll take one of them out. Uh, we will drop Voltaic Brawler. And we'll drop Bone Crusher. Um, yeah, so if we had attacked with the other Brawler, there was a chance. If they had let that through, then we could kill them with the Ramanop Ruins, but I think that they're aware of that. I don't think that that's a surprise to them, so I'm, I'm thinking that that's not going to be a, a, a viable out for us. Um, I truthfully don't think we have a viable out right now. I think we are just dead. Um, yeah, this is the the power of elves. I mean, we said it at the beginning, it's one of the best aggro decks, if not the best aggro deck in Historic, and you can clearly see why. Um, I mean, look at all this stuff. It's got the engine with the Beast Whisperer going. Uh, it's got multiple uh, channelers here, or clan callers, excuse me, that are, are pumping up the entire team. I mean... I think we're just dead, <laughs> but uh, we we play it out, right? We play it out. Um, 
There is a world where they hold back for a turn, but it looks like they're not going to. Okay. Well, what do we do? How much can we take? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we do have to block two things, it looks like. Um, those two things can be Rees for sure. Uh, and I think you or let's see, a 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it could just be this just to get the shepherd off the field. And then we're down to two. Um, and I mean, we're pretty dead. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay. I mean, we just go for it. Uh, take action. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, can't really hurt anything at this point. Um, alright, let's see what they do. So they're aware, obviously, that the Ramanop Ruins is a win for us, so they're not letting that through. Uh, which means we definitely lose, so I am gonna go ahead and concede here. Let's, uh, let's take a minute to talk about this, though, because this is an interesting one. All right, so let's talk Gruul. Uh, Gruul is a very interesting strategy, in my opinion, because it has a lot of the, the aggro-y elements and the, like, fast creatures that Elves does, but obviously not to that extent. And then it also just has some really nice interaction, which, generally speaking, is Elves, the Elves' downfall, right? Like, uh, if they don't have a way to deal with opposing creatures early or something like that, they maybe can't get through some of that early damage, and then they maybe can't win the game. Whereas with Red, we have a lot more interaction with things like uh, Bone Crusher Giant, with things that shut down the life gain, like the Marauding Raptor, um, and just some really cool, fun tactics, which Elves does get, like Coco. Uh, because obviously that's a really powerful card. Clothis is a really powerful card. Like that interacts on a very regular, I mean, turn by turn, it's going to do something. Uh, and so there's a lot of really good upside to running red in just a, a green shell uh, because you do get a lot of that interaction. I think that that's worth it. But uh, I do think the outright power level of elves is just way higher i mean the the we saw it in action just there um there's just no way you can compete with that i mean that's so so over the top it's ridiculous so uh what i would suggest is if you wanted if you were playing you know a mono green list or an elves list or something and you just got a little tired of it and you wanted to try something different this is a very comfortable switch uh, a very comfortable kind of move into a similar strategy that has a little bit more to it in terms of the interactive pieces. Uh, I don't think it's a better deck, but I do think it's a very strong deck. Uh, and obviously, you know, in the metagame, it's not doing terribly. Uh, it could be doing better, I think, but uh, it's it's not doing terribly. So I like this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a really fun one. Like I said, I have no clue when this is going to go up. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy these. Uh, but regardless, guys, please make sure you stick around. We have got a lot of other content coming out, challenge videos as well as more gameplay. We should also, uh, I'm, I'm really hoping we can get some commander content going, uh, which may or may not be out before this. We'll see. But regardless, guys, I really do appreciate all the support. You guys are amazing. Please check out our Patreon if you want to support us monetarily. Please don't feel like you have to, of course, but we would certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. I love you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you again very soon.